Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, everybody y'all listening to the voice of come on dig me now one and only steve harvey got a radio show i got a tweet the other day uh when steve harvey used to get to preaching i used to just turn the radio off but now it's different old dude be bringing it he be bringing the truth i appreciate that you know, man, when I was younger, man, when I when I wanted to do what I wanted to do, man, I just, man, I didn't want to hear nothing else. I, I, I didn't want to hear nothing that contradicted what I wanted to do. You know, so it's a funny thing, man, about me, man. I was, I would hear the truth. I would know it to be the truth, but because I had another plan, another mission, another goal, another set of dues I wanted to get done, I didn't want to hear that. You know, so funny thing, man, is like... <laughs> Like when I was a little boy and I used to get scared sometime at night, you know, the booger man. So I thought that if I just pulled the blanket up over my head, that that meant that the, if I can't see the booger man, he can't see me. That's the theory. That's an ostrich, you know, sticking his head in the sand thinking, wow, if I don't see this dude, he can't see me. A lot of ostriches done died with their head stuck in the sand. I just didn't want to be one of them people that left this world with my head in the sand. But uh, I just wanted to say, man, this morning that uh, <sighs> quit talking about change. Y'all listening? Because cause, cause this is real right here. Quit talking about change and let's make a change. You know, man, I don't... I, I don't mind giving people advice. I really, I really, really don't because so many people along the way have handed it to me freely, man. Some people just saw me doing wrong and say, young man, come here, let me talk to you for a minute. Some people say, hey, bro, look, man, I, I know what you're trying to do. Man, it wouldn't, have you thought about it this way? So I've had a lot of favor in my life, a lot of grace been shown on me, a lot of mercy, a lot of people that came to me. Help me along the way. So I don't have no problem with this part of what, what, I'm, what I'm obligated to do in the mornings. But let's quit talking about change, y'all. And let's make a change. See, change is growth. And ain't no growth without change. You got people, man, you ever met a person that's just insistent on doing it their way? I mean, nobody in the building think they should go that way. But they so boneheaded. Oh, this is how I'm going to do it. But, bro, listen to me, man. That ain't how it's done. You're going to run into this, this, this. I'll show you. Wait a minute, man. You, you, you can't do it that way, man. 
If you are sick and tired of where you are, then you have to change. Change can only come from within. Can't nobody make you change. Now, we got a penal system in place that can make you sit down if you don't want to change. We'll sit you down and we'll restrict your movement and your communication to the point where if you want to continue this foolishness, we're going to put you in this building with a whole lot of people that's foolishness. And y'all just trick each other all day long. But if you are sick and tired of your situation, pray for it. Pray for change. Ask God to help you change. Ask God what he want for you instead of always telling God what you want. It's an interesting prayer to have with God. When you quit going to God with your list and check in with God and see what his list is, that's a very interesting prayer. If, if you're a praying person, I suggest you try that sometime. It's so interesting, man. Do you know what it did for me when I started asking God what he wanted for me instead of telling God all the time? I still tell him what I want, but I, I, instead of all the time going to him with what I want, you know what it did for me? It freed me up. It took a lot of pressure off. I no longer had to think of everything. And what I was thinking of a lot of times wasn't working no way. And when I opened myself up to what he wanted, to what his will was, Man, do you know how much simpler my life got? And do you know how much bigger it got? I'm trying to tell you, man, if you pray for change and you allow God to help you with the change, or if you let God just produce the change, the change in you is, will be amazing. If you've been listening to me, out, especially out in L.A., since I was on the radio since 2000, can't you hear the change? <laughs> I'm flat out telling you that a change has come. But I had to pray for the change because I couldn't make the change on my own. And then after you pray for the change, you got to work towards your tra- change. You know, there's a, faith without works is dead. Everybody wants something from God, always want to talk to God about something. But then, man, ain't, 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 don't, don't want to do nothing about it. Faith without works is dead. You can't do it that way, man. It just does not happen. So, so after you done prayed to God about it, What you got to do then is you got to turn around and go, hey, man, all right, now, what is it I got to do? You know, you got to do something to bring it about. So after you pray for it, work for it and do something today about it. Stop procrastinating. Don't procrastinate, folks. The change can start today. Man, I want to change. How about today? You know, then you see them same people, man, I want to change. That's next week. How about today? I see people years later, man, I'm still in this same old situation, man. I'm going to do something. How about today? Today is a good day. There's nothing stopping you from changing today. Nothing except you. You can begin the process of change immediately. And change is growth, y'all. And ain't no growth without changing. It's a simple thing. And I'm talking to you in broad strokes because everybody got something about them they need to change. That's why I'm not specifically talking about anything. I got some things in me that need to change so I can grow further. Everybody has something about them that they need to change in order to grow further and then go further. Now, what's stopping you is you won't start the change today. Don't hesitate. Make that change And then I want you to watch something. When you change, watch the difference in you. Notice the difference in you. Feel the difference in you. And guess what? You going to be different. If you watching for the change, if you feeling the change, then guess what? You going to be different, man. Watch for the difference. Feel the difference. You will be different. If you sick and tired of your situation, folks, you can change that. But the change is in you. It's a simple decision you had to make. I'm going to change. The change is up to you. You can decide today if you want to change, you want to be different. If you're sitting behind the wall, I love speaking to the brothers and sisters behind the wall. If you're behind the wall, man, and you're sick and tired of being behind the wall, man, why don't you change? You ever thought about that? Change. Man, if I get back out there, I'm going to just do the same thing. Stop saying that. Stop breathing that negativity into your life. Decide today that you want to change. You can do it. Everybody can change. If you don't know how to change, pray for it, man. Ask God to help you with the change. Oh, you get some movement then, partner. You get a whole lot of movement then. All right? Let's ride.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, what's about to go down is personal. What's about to happen should have your undivided attention because anything that's personal, that means it involves you. Hmm. You are about to be heavily involved in a morning show. Oh, you're going to want to hang in there, but you got to go to work. Got to take kids to school. You got to go to sleep, one of the two. Welcome <laughs> to a problem. <laughs> the damn Steve Harvey morning show is a problem. If you use your earbuds at work, we a problem. If you listen to the strawberry letter, we a problem. Pay attention to these pranks, we is a problem. If you hear one of these ignorant ass poems, we are a problem. We got entertainment news for you. We got all of it. It ain't nothing but a situation. Come on, you been warned. Good morning, here we go, Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, Steve Harvey Nation. Good morning, Steve Harvey. Carla Pharrell. It's a big old problem, and I love it. <laughs> hey, crew, what's up? Kill Junior Spates. You think we playing with y'all? You think we playing? <laughs> Ooh, you King of pranks. It is a great big old problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it's it, up. man. And there's no solution but to keep listening. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. thank love you y'all. for that. We, we can't appreciate do your business. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody good? Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. 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 Thursday. Thursday. Uh-huh. Thursday morning. Almost uh-huh. the weekend. Yeah, yeah, got a lot to do. I think the week is going by pretty fast. To this speed. one went by really fast. Yeah, yeah last week did. was forever. But yeah, this it week was, was good. Love. Not well, if we you were fast. Three one feet or of two snow, days. Carla. Yeah, that was <laughs> well, it's eighty degrees down there now, Tommy. It is. <laughs> we can't win it. <laughs> it you tell me it ain't no global warming. <laughs> Whatever. It was seventy-two in Atlanta today. Yesterday. Uh huh. I mean yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Got up to seventy-two degrees. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's well, over with because it's going to rain until, what, Wednesday, they, Monday they're saying? Next week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? In yes. Atlanta? Yes. We got to go get an ark. So we yeah. got <laughs> to climb. Uh, Houston two froze over. Two. We about to flood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this weather ain't no joke, man. man. Nope, nope, nope. It is not. It is not. But, not, but we're happy today. to be here. Yeah, you good? Yeah, you know, my energy's good. I feel okay. wonderful. And, uh-huh. You know, I'm blessed. Got a lot of stuff to do today. Had a lot to do yesterday. Was pretty busy. But busy for me is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mm-hmm. when I ain't busy that something's happening. Well, that ain't never, so <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm good. Yeah, not busy? <laughs> you know, I, I had a meeting with somebody. I don't want to say who it is, cause, uh, uh-huh. but they... Uh, service that they provide us. No, no, no. They provide a service for me. Oh, well, I could okay. just say it. I met with my accountant. You know, I, I'll never have him to my house ever again. Why? Why? What he happened? was doing you taxes know, or something? Well, yeah, I don't like talking to accountants because they don't, they not dreamers. They not oh, visionary. Okay. They just They're number numbers people. people. Uh-huh. All they damn uh-huh. information be just depressing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey is in the building. This one, Steve, CLO, is from Marissa in Los Angeles. She says, my 33-year-old brother got out of jail after serving a nine-year sentence, and he's staying with me. He's looking for a job during the day, but in his spare time, he sits in my front. He sits in my front of my condo building, enjoying fresh air, smoking his cigarettes. Uh, He's tried to hustle up some income by going door to door, asking my neighbors to wash their cars. Yesterday, I got an anonymous note on my door saying my brother makes the residents feel uneasy. Is it because my brother and I are the only blacks in the building? She wants to know, CLO. Yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. What you think about it? (laughs) You get a note at your house because he's sitting on steps smoking cigarettes. He making it easy, but he going door to door asking people. He can't do that now. Uh-uh. What your brother need to do is go down to the car wash and get the job, get a job at the car wash, stuff like that. They don't do no background checks at the car wash. 
<laughs> I've never seen a car wash do the background check. He need to go down there, you know, and 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 take a shot. I appreciate him. Or what he do is he go up to the church and mm-hmm. solicit from the church. He got like a car better. detail company. Mm-hmm. You know, get him some buckets and stuff and start washing cars that way. But if you're going around this white neighborhood <laughs> with your ass with this tank top on with this cigarette dangling out the corner of your lips and a rag on your head, you're going to get flagged. I'm telling you right now, this racial profiling all damn day long. I tell you what, his ass better not to ring my damn doorbell talking about washing my car. So is it because you black? Absolutely, and you know it. Well, thank you, CLO. Go down to the black church and start there. Okay. All right. I I like that advice. Yeah. Kimberly in Montgomery says, I'm divorced and living with my ex until he recovers from knee surgery. He's been on his best behavior and he compliments me on my cooking, which is a first. I wish he was this nice when we were married. Friday night, I went out with my girls and had more than a few drinks. I went home and there he was, lying on his back. I took advantage of him, and he let me. He's all googly-eyed now, thinking we're getting back together. I still don't want him. I just wanted sex. How can I get out of this? Oh, that's cold. What? Uh You went out, had some drinks. He laying on his back. Uh She took advantage of him. You slept with your Mm ex-husband. How can you get out of this? I don't know. She thinks because, because she did that. He thinks they're getting back together. I would think so too. Mm. Hell, I, hell, what you mm. want me to think? <laughs> you come in the house from Friday. I'm laying up here. You know something wrong with my knee. You jump on me. Well, you know I can't do nothing on my knee. So now all I'm doing is I'm on my back. Uh huh. <laughs> so now we already know how this, what position this uh-huh. was. So now you done jumped on me. I, I'm, I'm up for it. Hello, uh-huh. ding, ding, ding. Pardon the pun. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, you know, you genuine. <laughs> now, 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 now what you want me to do? Yeah. I'm thinking we back together. Right. How can you get out of this? I don't know. And really don't give a damn. <laughs> Come on, Cielo. Next question. Sonia in Memphis says, I'm 50 and my husband is 10 years older. I am not trying to sound insensitive, but he's acting like an old man. He takes all types of supplements, and we have a humidifier in our room. So the whole room smells like eucalyptus nightly. He blows his nose in handkerchiefs that stay in his pockets, and when I take our clothes to the cleaners, I have to pull the handkerchiefs out. He's changed into my grandpa, and I can't take it. CLO, you don't act like an old man. Can you give me advice for my husband? Well, let me tell you something. Okay. I'm 64. Mm-hmm. I stopped carrying handkerchiefs years ago. <laughs> but Chiefs. If, he, if, he, if he got <laughs> sinus, he got a problem. Now, this supplements you're talking about is to keep him healthy. I take a lot of supplements. Uh-huh. I tell you right now, my pill pack in the morning and my pill pack in the morning, I praise God for this, though. Thank God I'm on no prescription drugs. Yeah. I thank God for that all the time. Praise God. I got off high blood pressure, medicine, all that. Fixed that with diet and exercise. So I thank God for that. Now, with that said, I do take supplements. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them. And so, you, but see, what didn't happen is you tired of his ass. So, see, I don't care what he do. Right. See, when you now he now the damn humidifying the room, smell like you, eucalyptus, eucalyptus all that. Who don't like that? You know, it ain't like, ain't like he got Ben Gay open up or Dones Vicks laying around. <laughs> you know, Vicks, he got eucalyptus. You know, he trying to, mm-hmm. but maybe he got a little something. You just tired of it. You been in the house in COVID, locked up. Y'all ain't so, been nowhere. That's yeah, all so it is. What should she do? Just be a little more patient, you're saying? I mean, with you know, him? come on now. Not, you know, now if you want to do something else, you know, Go in there and have that discussion with it. But don't leave somebody because y'all going through a down period. Sit down and have a talk. Tell him mm-hmm. about the things you're concerned with. See, he might have some concern. See, because you ain't all that either, though. Oh, 
Oh, no, see. No, listen to me. <laughs> no, what I try to help people are, if you sit down and talk about each other's concerns, mm-hmm. you might find that he might have some concerns, too, is what I'm saying. I, I get what yeah. you're see, saying. But so, okay. See, see to me, you, <laughs> it takes two people to have a problem. But she's saying he ain't sick. Yeah, pretty right. much. Yeah, the detective but now, like swag. Grandpa. He not yeah. sexy. Uh-huh. Okay, but let me ask you a question though. Hmm. Does he have a reason to be? Has he lost his sexiness towards you because you lost yours towards him? Could that be the issue? I don't know, but I'm saying if you all sit down and talk, you may find out that maybe something's causing him to feel this way, and y'all need to just reignite the spark that y'all once had. You know, y'all need some date nights, need to dress up, yeah. get out the house, yeah. you know. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank Unplug you, Unplug all them old ass machines in <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Coming up next, the nephew would run that prank damn peels off back. the nightstand. I can't even put my foot up here. <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in trending entertainment news, Tiger Woods is recovering, but... He is concerned about his legacy. Uh, Plus, Gladys Knight will sing the national anthem at the 2021 NBA All-Star Game. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. You know how we do. But right now, it is the nephew here for Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? Love deposit. (laughs) How sexy was that? Love deposit. (laughs) Not at all, Let's go, cat dog. I'm not. I'm not gonna yeah. work. Well, love the pot. Don't ask well, us. Well, well, if you go. ask me, you sound slow. <laughs> well, love the pot. Come on, cat. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Tiffany. Uh, this is Tiffany. Who's calling? This is Karan. How you doing? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. I don't know. Hi. You know what? I know we've been I know we've been going back and forth on the site talk, talk, talking yeah. and we haven't you know really talked yet. So um Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> it's okay. I just wasn't expecting a call, but yeah, it's good to hear from you. Um it's good to hear from you all. You know, I mean, we've been we've been talking for well a over, long time. Well, texting and on the site for at least what 5 weeks now. Yeah, it's been really I'm I'm glad you called. Uh, for real, seriously. Like, Ann, I love your voice. So I'm excited. Hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> um, you know, um, you got anything going on this weekend? Um, I don't think so. I, I just have to, like, you know, go grocery shopping or whatever. But, like, other than that, I'm pretty open. What's up? I was thinking maybe we get together, get a get a drink or two, just, you know, kind of yeah. hang out That's a little so bit, exciting. feel each other out. Uh, if, you, if you're feeling that, you know, I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. We can get together. I, I'm interested, you know. Like, I'm, I'm happy you called, and I would love to see you this weekend. Um, you got a place in mind, like, uh, area. You know, I, you know, I was thinking about letting you pick something because, you know, I'd, I'd rather go somewhere where you're comfortable, an atmosphere okay. that you're used to. Um, I think that would be the, the best thing to do. Okay. <laughs> well, let me yeah. look. <laughs> let me find out. I'll get back to you on that. But, yeah, I'm down for sure. I just want to hang out a little bit. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> cool, yeah. cool. I'm excited. <laughs> good, good. What what's good for you? Um you know if you want to do so some Friday do or, my... or Saturday, it's it's up to you. Yeah, let's do um uh, let's do Saturday to give me, you know, some time to like, you know, get myself together. Okay. Six or seven. Text me uh, you know, the location or whatever, wherever you want me to okay, meet cool. you. Okay, cool. You know, I'll be there. Okay, cool. Hey, okay, hey, cool. I can't thing, wait though. to see you. One, one more up? thing. Okay, let's let's do this first. Tell me this. What what, what are we wearing? So I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be overdressed or underdressed. I don't really trip on that. First day could be chill. Like I'm not. You know, we don't have to do like a five hundred dollar dinner or nothing like that. You don't uh, need on a tux. Gotcha. This ain't the uh, Rock Nation brunch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but if you don't mind, if I could get you to do something for me, could you? Um, could I give you my cash app? For what? Well, what I want to do is, you know, sometimes these things actually go wrong. You know, I don't see it going wrong with me and you because we've had, you know, the way we've been chit-chatting and going back and forth on the site, things have been really, really well. You know, you know, I would like to get, you know, like a, you know, a love deposit of $250. That way, if this go wrong, at least I haven't wasted my time. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 
<laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm just processing what just happened. Um, you said you want me to get your cash app and send you a love deposit of two hundred and something dollars. Two fifty. Two fifty. Like you know, that way if this don't, if this don't go right, you know, <laughs> then at least I have them. You know, it's a love. De- it's like a love deposit. You know, if it go if it goes right, you know, then I give it back to you. If it don't go right, you know, at least I haven't wasted my time. You see what I'm saying? Cry. You serious right now? Y- yeah. Like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is super weird, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh weird, and uh, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I don't even really know what to say, like. Other than um, you could probably lose my number. Like you a weak dude. Like don't call me. Like you're corny. I'm not interested. You're a bum. Like I'm straight. Like I don't okay, know what okay. else to okay. say. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I wasn't all that. No, I, I wasn't all that. Really talk about. We've been talking. We've been talking for five weeks. Everything been good. We've been. But we've weeks, been though. on the site talking but to each other. Though. But two weeks though. You trying to ask me for a cash app for real? A love deposit? How corny are you? Are you serious? Seriously, okay. If you believe, listen, look, Tiff, Tiff, on the real. If you believe in yourself, Tiff? then you then you deposit <laughs> back. You know. What I'm if saying? I believe in myself, get your fool ass out of here. You have lost your f-ing mind. Okay. Would you please like gather your thoughts? Because I don't know who you think you're talking to for real. You know what I'm saying? So I need you to do two things: lose my f-ing number and don't. Don't look for me, for real, straight up. Like this is ridiculous. Like this is stupid. You ignorant, for real, straight up. Okay, okay. Show, up. show me, no, show me where I'm wrong. Up. If you believe in yourself, though. If, if I believe in myself, ass dude. What you mean? If I believe in myself? If you believe in yourself, your ass will move around, get off the phone, and stop wasting my time. For real, I'm about to hang out right now. For real, I'm trying okay, to okay, move. Okay, okay, okay. This is a violation of my faith. Straight okay, up. Okay, before you hang up, though. Hey, you, can, you can go your you could go your way. I can go mine. You don't want to cash out me to two fifty. Cool, got I ain't that. Cash out to two fifty. Fuck ass, dude. Okay, <laughs> what are you okay, cool. To? Hey, it is. It, you know what? It Where? is. What it is? Is this your loss, though, Tiff? This your loss. <laughs> you got to be out of your rabbit ass mind. Ain't no losses here. Ain't no losses. Ain't no losses. Okay. But this is okay. a lesson. Okay. You know what? You know what? I knew this was going to happen. You know, no, when, I, I know when a brother try to be happen. real, when a brother try no, to be real, this is what happens. <laughs> hey, hey, you might as well. Hey, turn around, go the other direction. Lock yourself up. Seriously. You okay. want to talk about black black men and brotherhood? Like, it's a wrap for you. We don't need you out here. You're useless. Straight up. Like, don't call me. Destroy yourself. For real. I'm done with this. Goodbye. Okay. Oh, okay. can, I, can I tell you something else before you leave real quick? What? I just want to let you know that this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your sister, Lachey, <laughs> Lachey got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Your sister, Lachey, said you got to get my sister. She's been on the line. She's been on this, on this dating site talking to this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna get her. This is crazy. Uh, uh, well, I tell you what. I'm glad you're not real. Tell me this. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Uh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, y'all. Ooh, play too much. Hi, y'all. Hey, at the park, baby. Love deposit. She was not having it. <laughs> mm. But he, think mm. he, he thought he was really sexy on that plane. Uh huh. He did. He did. Yeah. He hey, she was into long. it though. She was into it in the beginning. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I had her. My sexy hat at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, nephew. Nice try. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news. Right after this. Thank you so much, Shirley. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva said that Tiger Woods will not face criminal charges over the car crash, and he is calling it a pure 
quote unquote accident. The sheriff went on to say there is no evidence showing that 45 year old Tiger Woods was under the influence of any substance when he drove his vehicle off a cliff in Palos Verdes, California on Tuesday. Tiger's doctors explained that he suffered from fractures affecting both upper and lower portions of the tibia and fibular bones and were stabilized, uh, was stabilized by inserting a rod into Tiger's leg. Also, his ankle injuries have been stabilized with a combination of screws and pins. Tiger's girlfriend, Erica Herman, visited him yesterday, and a source close to Tiger says he doesn't want his career to end like this. So if there's any way at all he can continue playing golf, he will. Wow. Come on, Tiger. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, yeah, no, you know, uh-huh. uh, like Obama, uh, like President Obama uh, texted if we've learned anything at all from Tiger Woods, don't count him out. That's, That's for right. sure. That's right. And That's so, right. you know, uh-huh. Alex yeah. Smith made probably the, the most amazing comeback I've ever seen in sports history from what he can His leg, man, they were talking about amputating it. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know that. He, oh, wow. you, you should. I watched his E60 story. I went, uh-huh. whoa. They got the best marketing minds in the world. All they had to do was come up with a name that wasn't racist. And what they come up with? Washington football team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they could have called them the damn Denzel Washingtons. They could have called them anything. Ooh, and yeah. all they came like up that. with was the damn Washington <laughs> football team. Who the hell are they paying up there? All they said was well, you can't call them the Redskins no more. That's all they said. Can't say nothing racist. Okay, cool. Right. We what we gonna come up with? Washington football team. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. You know, we're praying for you, Tiger. We know you're gonna come back. We do. Washington Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> In other entertainment news as we move on, the Empress of Soul herself, Gladys Knight, will perform the national anthem at the NBA All-Star Game going down in Atlanta on March 7th. Her performance will be part of a tribute to HBCUs. Uh, Gladys Knight graduated from Shaw University in North Carolina. There will also be a rendition of the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, performed by the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society Choir, Grambling State University Tiger Marching Band, Uh and Florida Uh A&M University March 100 will also perform during the player introductions. And uh, also, Steve and Tommy, the uh, Divine Nine fraternities and sororities will spotlight step teams from Spelman and Morehouse Colleges. So, Come on, NBA. NBA. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's going to be a full cool weekend. Yeah. I'm a, I might mess around to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Junior. Put your mask on. Junior. Your little sick ass ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know I ain't going to. <laughs> Stay your ass right there in that apartment. You doing good. You got a TV. <laughs> you know, I'm just messing up. I just, had, just felt good. Cut this little ragged ass game on and sit your ass down. <laughs> I bet not see nobody I know down there. Uh, if they do, they ain't coming to my house ever again. Ever? <laughs> ever. Uh, ever, you ever, like ever. Company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, know, so. Man. Well, well, that sounds like a show right there. That yeah. sounds well, like a show. Shout out to the NBA, right, Shirley? Yeah. Including HBCUs all uh-huh. weekend, all-star weekend in the A. I love it. Yeah, that. I'm going to look forward to seeing Gladys, Gladys Knight because you haven't seen yeah. her in a minute. Did you say you know. Gladys, Gladys. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's going to be good. All of this, the marching band, all of this. <laughs> Sound like a lot to me. I'm just going to be real with you. <laughs> Before the game. <laughs> Oof, Lord. When, what time is this game? <laughs> we will be up all night Patience. watching if it. You, <laughs> if, if you get into the second verse of the Negro anthem, uh-huh. woo, we're going to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start crying. Lord. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you something. I went to an event in Chicago one time at this uh-huh. uh, Dubois du- 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 Museum, Dubois du- Museum, something like that. I can't think of it. Oh, um. And, uh, WB yeah, Dubois? Go ahead. No. Um, no. DuSable? DuSable. Yeah. yeah. DuSable Museum. And boy, this lady got up and had everybody stand up and they had a screen with the words going across it like karaoke. Uh huh. And they did Negro Anthem. This lady played all three verses. Wow, how long is that? Man, let me tell you something. 
Because once you get out of verse one, man, you got to pull yourself together. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let me tell you something. You get to verse two, they take you to some dark places in your mind, boy. You be up in there, man, needing therapy. When, when you get to verse three, whoo! Man, what the hell happened to us? I just felt like Jesus. Man, this ain't a national anthem. This is a documentary. I was just, I was, you, ever, you ever been singing and itching at the same time? Was just scratching it too much. Man, the hell going on in here? And the dark we tried. Oh, man, come on. Wait, hey. Uh, man, can y'all can, 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 can we do something with the melody? Yeah, <laughs> man, it's the melody. Pick it up, you know. We got we got a lot of talented people. Let's just put something pick in it. it. Up. Just pick get it some up. violins or something right here, man. It's just, historical. Be quiet. This damn one saying, trumpet don't playing. Don't say oh, man. Anyway, NBA, look at the time. Come on, Shirley. Yeah, coming up twenty minutes after the hour. In honor of Black History Month, okay, oh, okay, Carla and I will tell you where we're from, okay? We got okay. our ancestry done. We're going to tell oh, you Oh, okay. Right I've been waiting to hear this. Yes. Yeah, yes, I've been yes. waiting on this right yes. here. This is going right. to be good. And while y'all doing it, we're going to have the anthem playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In honor of Black History Month, we've teamed up with our friends at Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head and Shoulders to help you discover your heritage. We've got your chance. Now listen to this, everybody. This is important. We've got your chance to win $1,000 in cash. Did you hear what I said? $1,000 in cash, okay? That's mm. a lot of money right, right now, okay? Anytime. Plus hair care gift baskets from both Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head & Shoulders. But $1,000, people? Come on. <laughs> and we're also going to give you two African ancestry test kits for the winner and their spouse or friend. Enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. Discover your heritage today. Get all the info at steveharveyfm.com. Don't forget $1,000. That is big, all right? <laughs> anyway, so Carla and I took the African ancestry test. We kept mm -hmm. it a secret from you guys. We didn't let anyone yeah. know. We're going to reveal our African ancestry results right now. Drum roll, please. All, All right, right, Carly, you, you, you go first. You want me to first. go first? Yeah, you go first. All right. So. Mm. I'm going to write where I think you from. Okay. Well, the results came back from AfricanAncestry.com. Yes. And mm. I found out that my ancestors are from Ghana. Boom, oh, baby. Did deep. I say yes. Ghana yesterday? <laughs> That's good. Ah, That's deep. You did say yes. Ghana yesterday. I did say Ghana yesterday. Yes. Tommy, you, you did say Ghana That's yesterday. That's good. Ghana's a mm -hmm. great place, too, mm -hmm. man. I got good friends yes. over there. I had Kenya. Oh, oh okay. Kenya. All right. Okay. Yeah, I like Kenya, too. I had right. Hold on, Cheryl. I already know where you're from. I, already, I know where Cheryl is <laughs> from. You all from. have no idea. Oh, you all oh, have no idea. I know exactly where you're from. I got okay. it. All right, I got you, Cheryl. You ready? All right, yeah, I'm, from, <laughs> I'm from the Central African Republic, all right? What? what? I've never even heard of it. I'm me, telling me. you. Two, two, Central three. African Republic, that's where I'm from. It's You're a Republican? <laughs> they speak French and Sango is their language. Uh, Cameroon is to the west, just to give you placement. And Sudan, North and South Sudan are uh, north and east of where I'm from. Central African Republic. All right. I said Congo. I thought, Egypt. The Congo I thought you some Congo, sure. I had Egypt. The Congo is south of there, Tommy. See, I, I Congo had Congo. There. Right there where them diamonds at. That's what yeah, I had. So you're, but that's that's one of their natural resources. Diamonds, that's why cotton, you and bougie, coffee. Shirley. We knew it. <laughs> anyway, that's whatever. Why. I knew it. What you had, Steve? <laughs> what did you uh, have? I had no other Egypt. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I had Egypt. <laughs> If you want to discover your heritage today, like Carla and I did, yes. enter to win $1,000 too, plus hair care gift baskets from both Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils from Head and & Shoulders, and two African Ancestry test kits for the winner and their spouse or friend. Enter and get all the rules at steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
President Barack Obama and rock and roll legend Bruce Springsteen have a new podcast. Uh, it's called Renegades Born in the U.S. And they discuss race, marriage, manhood, and the divided states of America. Well, during a recent podcast, uh, President Obama revealed that he once broke his friend's nose for calling him a racial slur. Take a listen. When I was in school, I had a friend. We played basketball together. And one time we got in a fight, and he called me a coon. Now, first of all, ain't no coons in Hawaii, <laughs> right? So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where he might not even know what a coon was. What he knew was, I can hurt you yeah. by saying this. <laughs> and I remember I popped him in the face and broke his nose. And yeah. we were in the locker room. Well done. And suddenly, blood's <laughs> pouring down. And it was just reactive. I just, yeah. I said, what? And I popped him. And he said, why'd you do that? <laughs> and I explained to him, I said, don't you ever call me something like that. Wow. Mm. Who See, knew? This is why, this why I want him and Trump to get face to face. This is what, this <laughs> yeah. what I want right here. <laughs> this is <laughs> this what I want you know right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I want. Barack is a G. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> ain't, nobody, ain't nobody taking that, man. No. <laughs> No. Playing no, no games with you, partner. Right. Coon. Okay, so coon. Coon's in Hawaii. I, I, got mean, something, I, the, I got something for your ass. I know the answer to this already, Steve, but have you ever been called a racial slur? Yeah. What did you on do? Did you on the elevator. On the elevator. Well, I was on the elevator in college. Uh-huh. This is the first time. Because I went to school with all blacks, elementary, junior high, and high school. I, I never saw a white student mm-hmm. in my life. I ain't... I ain't I, I didn't even know where they went to school. All I know is when we had track meets, we was going to warm their ass. Now, they was going to be winning early with the shot, putting pole vault and all that. But when we get to this track event, track, though, we finna take all the these track. titles to the house. <laughs> right. we, finna, we, we was placing first, second, and third. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. So I was in college, and uh, I was standing on the back stairway one time, and this white guy came by, bust through the doors. And I don't know if he saw me or not, but he pushed me. And I fell down the steps. I tore all the ligaments in my knee, in, in my ankle. So I was on crutches. And he played football. So I was on the elevator. I was on crutches for about three months. About six weeks in, I'm on the elevator. And uh, he got on the elevator with some friends. And I was looking at him, and I recognized him. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they was drunk, and they spit on all the elevator buttons. You know, just drunk white boys playing a little college playing. You know, now, and so now I got crutches. So I take my crutch and I press the eighth floor. Mm-hmm. He said, yeah, what'd you do that for, N-word? Oh, that was four of them on the elevator. Wasn't nobody on there but me. Mm-hmm. But you can't call me that, partner. I was 18. Uh-huh. Oh, no, dog, I ain't had no money. And some crutches in your hand? Dog. <laughs> you got something to work with. One, dog, I took that crutch. <laughs> Put it up on. I learned how to walk on them good. I was on them for six weeks. Uh-huh. I took that crutch and pop, punched him dead in his throat. Wow. He started little blood started coming out. Of my, boy, them white boys jumped on me. They was warming my ass. <laughs> and that door came open on the fifth floor. Uh-huh. And that's where all the blacks played spades and dominoes by the elevator. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they were stomping me, and I, the door was closing. And uh-huh. I saw that fifth floor, and I threw that crutch in the door. And then that bumper hit that crutch, and a dude named Bane say, "That Wonder Love." <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> What's that, boy? <laughs> let me tell you something. Them brothers came on that elevator. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That that elevator was on that fifth floor for about five six minutes. <laughs> Bro, man, from the fifth floor. <laughs> Bro, they was up in there. They was yes. they was about Busy. the business too. I was proud of them. I was real proud of them. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ain't nothing like a good ass whooping story. I love it. I've <laughs> been, I've been probably called an N word in my life by somebody white probably six times. Really? Six times, yeah. A total. Every last one of them is a fight. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, if no, if no the former pass. president had a fight about it, yeah. you know, good and hell well, my yeah. broke ass right. that fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Steve. Coming up next, the nephew in the building with a prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. We'll get into that in just a little bit, yeah. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Well, sometimes you got to do it, and sometimes you got to look and search for services that can accommodate you. And we have it, fellas. We have it available for you. This is Wife Correction Services, okay? Wife what? Correction Are Services. You, we should, what? Who? Wife. <laughs> what, you talking about that? wife, folk? No, your wife, boy. Wife <laughs> Correction <laughs> Services. I thought, said, I thought you said wife, folk, correction <laughs> services. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wife. Come on, cat oh, dog. Shut up, dude. Ignorant okay. show right here. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I am trying to reach uh, George, please. Who is this? My name is Marcus with WCS. Uh, call and see if we can actually try to uh, lend you our services. We understand that you're having a few problems and want to see if uh, maybe WCS can bring um, a better life to you and you can have a, uh, uh, an exciting life better than the one you have now. Who is, who is it? Who is WCS? We are with Wife Correctional Services, sir. WCS, what it is, is we take your wives for a couple of weeks and we reprogram them so that it's take suitable. My wife. Of course, you have to sign a waiver contract, but we take your wife and we reprogram them so that they will act in a fashion of what you want them to act. Oh, I, okay, man. Yeah, okay, whatever. Well, that, see, sir, what it is is that we've gotten <laughs> some we've gotten some reports that you've been having some problems with with your particular wife. And, and man, I ain't never heard of y'all, man. Where you located at? We're here in St. Louis, sir. Okay. And, and don't worry, we're we're totally confidential. This is not anything that's going to get out. Um, and and your your names are never submitted. First of all, here's here's something we can do. I can ask you questions because we've been notified that this is probably a service that you would probably want. Now, um, has your wife ever snapped on you in public? And snapped on me. I mean, which I mean, she. My wife ain't crazy. She don't just snap on me. She might, you know, try to check me or uh, uh, say something. You know what I'm saying? She ain't just gonna snap on me in public. So your you know wife, your, so your wife has tried to check you. Is what you're saying? I mean, not check me per se. I mean, she might, she might not like something I'm doing and might say something about it. But what, she don't what, just snap on so, me. You know so, so basically, your wife is not in her place where she needs to be. Hold on. I mean, what you mean in her place? I mean, she might say something. You know, I mean, I might be doing something or, you know, might be with my boys and might get out of control a little bit. She might just say something at the time, but she don't just try to all out check nobody. You know what I'm saying? Okay. 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 I'll tell you what. Let me ask you this one. Have you ever just had some plans with your guys? Was going to go out and had to change your plans because um, your wife. Well, I mean, if, if, if like I'm just talking about hanging out and I ain't let her know or something, she might. You know, be like, well, baby, I already had plans. You know, can you stay home with the boys or something? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, not, I mean, nothing on the regular. You know, mm -hmm. I usually do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems like denial. Okay, here's another one, sir. Denial. Well, well no, just uh, listen, hear me out. Now, let me ask you this. Um, has your wife, uh, let's say back when Michael Jordan was playing basketball, did you right. ever miss a playoff game on television because your Michael wife Jordan? wanted to watch something else? Nah, man, we got two TVs in my house, man. I wish I, nah, I don't even get down. I mean, I might have to watch the little TV. Okay. But, I mean, I usually watch it on the big screen so in you, the basement. Yeah, yeah. But, but you doing, you've you been pushed to watching the smaller television. No, nah, I wasn't pushed to do nothing, man. What I'm trying to tell you is, I mean, we compromise. We do 50-50 in my house. I mean, she might get the big TV to watch her stories or something, and I just have to go watch the little TV. The little TV do go out of here once in a while. See, there we go. I mean, so, but I, so, but I'm so, cool with that, though. I'm cool with that. You're cool you know with what that. I'm saying? So you're, I'm cool you're, with that. you're actually the one that's programmed, and you, you see, Ain't nothing wrong with my wife. Ain't nothing wrong with, with in my family. You I, know what I'm saying? I, I understand. Well, let me. the reason why I'm asking you these particular questions is because someone has actually let me know the problems that are at hand in your household. Let me ask you. I got one question for you. Here's yeah. what I want to ask you. Has your wife ever cussed you out at a family cookout? Hey, man, hold on, man. You know what, dog? You getting a little personal, man. Yeah, is this even legal, man? I'm, I'm, sir, is this it's, legal? It's, it, it, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Well, to... I ain't never heard of this company, man. Well, I have not. I've never heard of you, this, dog. This is something new. It's definitely. Well, I'm saying something new. I mean, what? Don't make me be your guinea pig. Don't, don't start out calling me trying to get, you know, referrals or clientele or whatever it is you're trying to do, man. Don't call me with this nonsense, partner. And, and I completely understand it. WCS, sir, is, is here to benefit you. It's here to benefit. ain't no benefit to me, man, getting all up in my personal business, wondering what's going on in my household. Okay, well. 
last thing I want to ask you, and, and, and this is the last question I have for you. Like, like hey, I said, hey, make, it, make this the last one, straight up. Okay. Have you do you do do you buy your own clothes or does she buy the clothes? Hey man, you know what, man? This man you whatever company this is, dog, don't call my house no more. And whoever put you up to this, whoever gave you my number, talking about my wife, check me, uh, got me under control, got me on lock, man. You tell him too. Dog, don't call me no more with this. Are you are you in thing. are you in denial? No, 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 denial, dog. Don't call my house no more. I'm gonna tell you what, George Foreman or whatever. It's Marcus, it's Marcus, 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 whoever you are, George Foreman, Marcus, hey, dog, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to find out where y'all located, dog, I'm coming down there, and I'm going to bust your because you're in my personal business. So you're ready, you're dog. ready to retaliate on me, but not, but you, my but you dog, don't want to retaliate saying, on the problems you have with your wife? Retaliation, man, what I'm saying, you, you call in my house, I'm, I'm minding my own business, you worrying about who watching what TV in my house and my wife checking me in public, all I do, man, hey, dog, look, I'm telling you. Mr. don't you want to watch the big television? big TV, man. I'm comfortable with the TV I got, you know what I'm saying? It's in my room, I can lay across the bed, watch whatever I want to, whenever I want to. My don't you want to be able to go out with the boys when you want to? I go out with my partners, dog. I, matter of fact, you need to get partners, you call them asking these old dumb Listen. What you want to do to me, your wife has already done to you. Wait, I see you got your damn number block. What's your phone number, man? Give me something. Tell me where to find you. Man. Why are you in denial? Denial, dog. I'm going to tell you what's in what's You need to get your wife checked in to wife correctional man. services so that man. you can live a better life. Uh, whoever you are, man, y'all need to get a life, man. Can I... Get a life, man. Stop calling me, dog, for real. I, I understand it. Can I say one more thing to you, sir? Man, you can't say to me, man, straight up. Listen to me, sir. Yeah, what? 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 This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Justin. You know what, man? <laughs> 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 oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, y'all got me, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? You already know it's you, my boy Steve Harvey, doing it in the morning on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, partner. Oh, man. <laughs> Who you play too much? Uh, Don't uh, you want to watch the big TV? <laughs> you got to want to watch the big TV, though. Come on, man. Get your wife you kept telling them he in denial. Live a better life, yeah, man. that was good. I like that one. Get your time. wife checked in so you can live a better life. <laughs> <laughs> Like you. Your wife ain't never You're checked something. you at a family cookout. She ain't never went off on you at a family cookout, though. No. <laughs> well, he caught on to what he was doing at first. He was just like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, hold wait. up. <laughs> What'd you think oh, about that one, Steve? You know, that's one of the ones where I don't even know how it went that long, really. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you can't figure how you being pranked that long. <laughs> no, oh, man. I don't know, man. I can't. I, that's a, Your that's wife has never... Well, you know, she, you know, I do something. You know, right. To, <laughs> to a complete stranger, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Once you hit a nerve, um, when you hit that nerve, they not think about nothing else. You didn't hit that nerve, man. man you got to yeah. hit that nerve. You pushed man. the buttons. Yeah, sure. you did. Yeah, you did. I like the levels, too. Yeah. All good that level. explaining to a complete stranger, though. You know, when you like to go out with your friend, man, I go out with my friend. <laughs> 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 He called you okay. George Foreman. Once again, we're in denial. Yeah. Oh, man. That was a good one, Neff. I like He's it. He's in denial. <sighs> All right. Thank you, Neff. Coming up next, Strawberry yeah. Letter subject. I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In honor of Black History Month, we've teamed up with our friends at Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head & Shoulders to help you discover your heritage. We've got your chance to win. Check this out. We've got your chance to win $1,000. That's a lot of money, $1,000. Yes, plus hair care gift basket from both Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head & Shoulders and two African Ew. Ancestry test kits for the winner and their spouse or friend. $1,000. You can enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. Discover your heritage today. We did it earlier in case you missed it. Carla and I revealed our ancestry, where we're from. Carla, you go ahead. You're from? 
Ghana. My yes, ancestors yes, are from yes. Ghana. Yes. And I'm from and what a place about you, sure. I'm from a place I've never heard of. It's called the Central African Republic. I know about it now, wow. but just for yeah. reference, it's next to Cameroon mm. and uh, the Sudan and the Congo, right in the middle. They light skinned over there. Yeah. I anyway, probably saw time. quiet. <laughs> yeah, she said she never heard of it. Like she never heard about the hood either. She never. I don't know. <laughs> So win your $1,000. Go get in the contest. Get all the info at steveharveyfm.com. $1,000 at stake, guys, okay? All right. Uh, Switching gears, time now for the Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, Neff. Subject, I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. Dear Stephen Shirley, I have been married for five years, and it's a second marriage for us both. My issue is my 46-year-old stepdaughter that has been inviting her mother everywhere for years. My husband divorced his first wife in 1987, and his daughter is still including this woman in all of our family functions. The ex-wife is the daughter's best friend, and they do everything together. I don't have a problem with them being best friends, but I draw the line at her coming to family functions that I throw. My husband's ex-wife is still close with his parents and they exchange presents at every birthday and for Christmas. I said something to my in-laws so they slacked off from spending so much time with her. It's my stepchild and my husband that don't understand that the ex-wife should get a life and go be around Uh, go be with her own husband. Uh, Yes, she's remarried and uh, her new marriage is in jeopardy because of her daughter being all in the mix. My stepdaughter hates the new husband because he's asked her to stop popping up with her kids. My husband took his daughter's side and encourages her to be rude to this man. I have asked my husband how he'd feel if I had a grown daughter and uh, that's always around us and she brings my ex-husband to events at our home. He said he wouldn't like it one bit, but I should understand that a mother-daughter bond can't be broken. So I finally told my stepdaughter to stop bringing her mom to my house and she told me it's her dad's home too. I'm fighting a never ending battle and I need your advice. How can I stop this woman from popping up? Okay, let me just say that everyone in this family, uh, this letter is crazy, uh, except you and your in-laws apparently. At least your in-laws have a good sense to back off after you spoke to them. But this 46 year old daddy's girl, her mama and your husband are ridiculous. Uh, The daughter, because she's disrespectful to you, of course, to your marriage, to her dad, and she knows it. She knows what she's doing. Her mama, because she's got a whole husband at home, and she still can't say no to her grown daughter and won't miss a chance to come to your events. What is this about? Her husband is sick of it, and uh, their marriage is in trouble. Your husband is an idiot because he lets all of this go down and sees nothing wrong with his ex crashing all your functions, and he won't check his daughter. I mean, the line about uh, the the mother-daughter bond that can't be broken, that's crazy. Uh, It's not about the mother-daughter bond. It's about your marriage and how you're feeling and and the fact that he won't check his own daughter. Uh, This daughter is really sad because she obviously, obviously has no life. She has no friends, and so she drags mommy everywhere she goes. Then mommy, uh, she can't be wrapped too tightly, I'm thinking, because she goes, whether she's invited or not. They don't want you there. You don't want her at your home. All it would take is one word from your husband, and I think this situation could probably be cleared up like that. And, uh, you know, they'd stop all these shenanigans, but he says, you know, it's... the stupid stuff like the mother-daughter bond, like I mentioned. So to you, I say, instead of talking to his in-laws, which you did and that worked, and and this big baby uh, daughter of his, talk to him, sit him down, talk to him, tell him how you feel, how, you know, this is out of hand, how, you know, you want to change the locks, you don't want her invited anymore, how this is making a mess of your marriage, and, and it needs to change immediately and see where you go from there. Steve? This is a stupid letter. It really is. First of all, Shirley hit it completely on the head. Come. 
completely. She nailed it in other in every area. So what do I bring to this letter? What do I have to add? You know. I think this calls for a sermon. Mm. All right. I'm right on, here. Pastor. I think that when we come back, mm. Def Jam and mm. Reverend Motown mm. will cover this letter in only a way that they can. That's wow. right. That's right. Coming up, our response mm. to what they say is I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. Good God, I'm Lord, <laughs> That's Jesus. crazy. After this, the sermon. Thank you, Pastor. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after. Subject, I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Uh, should I say pastor and deacon? Uh, let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. We are going to approach this from a pontilithical and bigarious way. First of all, the subject is I'm sick of seeing my husband's ex-wife. We're changing the subject to I bet not see your ass again. (laughs) I bet not see your ass again. That's what we changed. Dear Steve and Shirley, I've been married for five years. Mm -hmm. And it's second marriage for both of us. Mm -hmm. My issue is my old ass stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. 46 (laughs) years old. Why is we calling her a stepdaughter at 46. <laughs> you too old for us to be referred to as step. You just grown ass woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the way. <laughs> in the way. Uh she's been inviting her mother everywhere for years. My husband divorced his first wife in 1987. Mm-hmm. That's 2 years after the 85 Maximus came out what I love <laughs> <Yeah>. dearly. <laughs> Lord, Very she nice. Was. I didn't yes. know nobody didn't want an 85 Maximus. No, I won't well, even this heifer was two years after that. <laughs> <laughs> now, if that ain't got has been written on it, you tell me what do. His daughter still <laughs> including this woman in all our family functions. The ex-wife is the daughter's best friend and they do everything together. Well, let me say this. If you 46, stepdaughter, inviting your mama everywhere, all over the new husband's house, all over the new wife's house, all over the people's house, I got one thing to say about that. The stepdaughter, the old Mm. ass woman ain't got no man. I bet you she ain't got no man. Mm, mm, mm. No. It's yeah. right there in the letter. It's mm. in the letter. She say, I don't have a problem with them being best friends, but I draw mm. the line at her coming to family functions that I throw. Uh. Who, I'm asking you a question, Deacon. Yeah. Who this hell for? Mm. Think she is. <laughs> mm. That she coming to a barbecue well, I bought all the ribs. Well, Pastor, then we maybe we need oh. to fix her a plate that she will never forget. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah. If you remember from the movie The Help, let's fix her a nice pie and put some in it. You know he I, didn't see that one, Deacon. He didn't so see now, that. So now, that ain't even an old movie yet. <laughs> My husband and wife is close with the parents. They exchange presents every day. Oh, here we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, we Santa Claus now. 
Oh, now we got gifts for this heifer. <laughs> she coming over crib and bringing bags and got names and drawing names and everything. Ain't that funky, huh? Well, I tell you what, this Christmas going to be different. Bring something else over here with a box in it. Huh? <laughs> You gonna get the you gonna carry that box back out of here, and you ain't gonna need no handles on the bag. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh-huh. The subject of the letter is: I better not see your ass no more. Again, that's right. That's right. That's the text. That's the text. Go ahead, pal. My stepchild and husband don't understand that his ex-wife should get a life. Well, uh-huh. she has a life because she has remarried. But the marriage is in jeopardy because the 46 year old keep going over her house too. Back over to your house, back over to her house. And bringing them ragged ass baby kids with them. Mm-hmm. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. This is jeopardizing not only the mama's happiness, uh-huh. but now your happiness. And you yeah. know why? Because she ain't happy. Mm. <laughs> 46, mm-hmm. about to be 47. Kids, ain't no man. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody on the horizon. I bet not see your ass again. I bet not see your <laughs> ass again. <laughs> My husband took his daughter's side and encourages her to be rude to this man because he don't like her. Mm-hmm. Well, the only thing I have for you, he talking about it, you don't understand that a mother-daughter bond shouldn't be broken. That's a true statement. Uh-huh. Well, you might not be able to break that mother-daughter bond, <laughs> but I can break something off in somebody rear end if they come over here <laughs> one more day. That's how you break it. Now, that's how you break it. That's all this Thank is you. about. Reason we did a sermon because Shirley covered it so well. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. We ain't got nothing over here for you, but communion over here. Coming up, it is our girl from the talk, Cheryl Underwood, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Carla's reality update. But right now, please, Steve, introduce our girl from the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Cheryl Underwood. Yes. Thank you, Steve Harvey, and the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Man, listen, y- y'all wild as I don't know what. So I heard y'all over there swapping spit and drawing blood and found out where y'all from. Is that what happened? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, Cheryl. I did it, yes. <laughs> okay, so, oh, Shirley Scrawberry, where you from? From where Central from? African Republic. In mm-hmm. Africa, That's by, the... over there by Cameroon and the Sudan oh, and wonderful. the Congo. Uh-huh. Congo, yeah, see I, by I Congo. see all that. Uh-huh. I see uh-huh. that. I see it in a Tommy. I see all that. I see the Congo. <laughs> oh. All in it. Now, where you from, Carlos? Ghana. Me too, girl. I went to Ghana. Listen, I was really, so sure? I went to Ghana for real. Okay, I was for real. I went to Cape Coast Castle, cried, mad at white folk all the way plane trip back, just <laughs> elbowing people down the aisle. Because <laughs> <laughs> the door no return, no joke, make you angry. Yeah, <laughs> well, oh Lord. Yeah, you that's angry, what Steve right? was telling me. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, it makes you angry. The reason I went is because Zeta Phi Beta has uh, a library there uh, under um, uh, one of our triumphant Sora Sora Mary Singletary. Uh, Mm-hmm. She helped us put the clinic together there, uh, nice. and we have a library there. But anyway, it does make you unhappy. But I had a picture of my father, uh, uh, Steve Harvey, had a picture of my father, and the, and the man from Ghana snatched the picture from me and said, where did you get that picture of me? I said, that's my father. <laughs> I snatched it back. <laughs> he said, it is a picture of me. I said, with him, we need to go on Maury Povich because obviously somebody been lying to me because smart. everybody I knew in my family, I could see from Ghana. But okay, so uh, Steve, don't you want to know where I'm from? Where, what part of Africa I'm from? Yeah, what Ask part are you from? Fairfax, right off Fairfax. I think right off of there. <laughs> what? Come to Los what? Angeles. You so you crazy. will see all the African people over on Fairfax. <laughs> it's an Ethiopian neighborhood. I go uh-huh. down there. I think that's oh, where I could be from. Right. Yeah. Now I heard y'all watching. What y'all watching? The British show with the black dude over uh-huh. there. What y'all y'all watching the British? That's Steve show? just started. We've all seen it. Steve just started. We've it. all seen it. He yeah, playing yeah. catch up. I, I don't have to watch it. Me and Junior make Bridgerton at the crib every night. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Oh, that's where you were going listen. with that, Cheryl. Uh, okay. Listen, me and Junior over there. Junior, you better <laughs> tell these people what's happening. 
<laughs> Junior had a little uh, little snuck. ruffle shirt on, speaking in an accent. You better, you better, you better say it over there, Junior. You better let these people know why I'm swooning and over Does there. Does that protrude it's you, my hot. grace? <laughs> that's what I'm talking. Ooh, that's what get me. Woo, Jesus, my shoe fell off. Sorry, Junior. Woo, oh, my lord. I hate to my do this lord. to you, my Cheryl, lord. but we're out of time. I say thank what? you. Who out of time? We Who are time? coming up next. I will be back <laughs> next week for the next episode of Junior. In Bridgerton. <laughs> Carla's right reality update right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Tommy, introduce her. She is here. Let's go. It's that time. It's time for reality update with Carla Farrell. Once again, reality update. All right, thank you, nephew. Well, I mean, really, earlier this week, was it Tuesday? We already did the recap. I did the recap of Real Housewives of Atlanta, the whole crazy Ooh, bachelorette mm. party, Cynthia's <laughs> yes. bachelorette party with the stripper and the sex swings. And you know, the swing, really yeah, the swing. And the swings. We pretty much covered all of that. So I think it's time for me to turn it over to my segment partner in crime, Mr. Steve oh, he your Harvey. Partner? Yeah. Well, he, you know what? He's been telling us, you know, he told us about this new show he's been watching. Cheryl kind of mentioned it on Netflix. So tell everybody what you went to now, Mr. Steve Harvey. What well, I just found this new show on Netflix called Bridgerton. <laughs> it's not new. <laughs> that's A. Brand new to me. Just popped oh, up on my screen. I ain't never seen it. <laughs> but uh, Sean, Chandra Rhymes came out with a hot one. And yes. it's in the 1800s. Mm. And it's got blacks and white on there, and they all got equal position, and the queen is black, and all this here. But they don't never mention race in it. So That's it's black that. dudes walking around with white British hair, and <laughs> riding the horses, and own stuff, and black people in charge of stuff, and talking crazy to white people, and white people ain't saying nothing because they're scared of them. And then, uh, you know, the white people love black people, and black people love the white people, and don't nobody mention it. And uh-huh. the leading dude in it that I'm only on episode three, the leading dude is a handsome, debonair black dude. Yeah. And yes, little white Lord. girl, little I mean, yeah. pale uh-huh. little white girl that <laughs> fell Watch for him. And now he over there, he working her ass half to <laughs> death. You know, he done taught her the game because she trying to get picked at the what looked like a debutante ball or something. They were trying to get chosen and everything. All these square ass dudes trying to run up on them. Ain't none of them got game. Just run mm-hmm. up on them talking about what pedigree from family they in and all this hell. <laughs> well, the black dude, he don't want to have no kids because he ain't like his damn daddy. Because his daddy <laughs> treated him like a monster. And I hated him, too, because his star used to have a stuttering problem. And all I saw was me. So I liked him right away. <laughs> so now you have stutter. put That's yourself you. in Bridgerton. Yeah. You have put so yourself in me and him hated his daddy. But I love my <laughs> real daddy because he told me, don't worry about that stutter. Just go make some money. You can be stupid if you want to. And so that's what that encouraged me. Yeah, he said, boy, don't worry about that. You ain't really stupid. Don't even worry about that. You just can't talk outside of here. You got good ass sense. You gonna uh-huh. be something. So anyway, so this white lady got these three uh, daughters. Yes. And she got four, really. Feathering too. And, uh, yeah, yes. And uh, <laughs> this chick that's the mama is the same chick that was in the Roman uh, thing on HBO. Game of she was the hot redhead. No, nah, in Rome. Oh. The, the, the HBO series called Rome. Okay. See, okay. y'all don't know nothing about this because I watch period pieces. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'll be dog. See, y'all well, need to get caught well, up. Oh, yes, sir. She the sir. one that slept with Caesar on the side. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. she plays the mother in this hill. Have mm-hmm. no idea what her name is, so please don't Clearly. ask. Clearly. <laughs> She got the three uh, frumpy uh, daughters, and mm-hmm. she got one of them that's supposed to be the cute one, but she really ain't. She ain't fine, okay. you know, at all. I don't, I don't see what nobody see in that little thing right there. She ain't got no body, nothing. Just well, before look. we run out of time, can you wrap up Bridgerton for us and and, and one Anyway, word? the dude is a player. The black dude's a player. He a duke, and the prince came from Russia to sweep off his feet, but she liked the black dude. And now the black dude got to marry her for honor. And he's finna have a duel with her brother and gonna kill his brother, but he end up whooping the dude's ass. It's all over the place. You don't know, watch <laughs> the oh, thing out. Is what's going on? That's how you know it's a good yeah, show. But I'm in episode three, and all I saw now is the black dude now got to marry the white girl. 
but uh-huh. he don't really want to. But they don't know nobody white and black in here. So I'm just adding you hood commentary because <laughs> ain't no black and white people in there. They just people. But you can tell they black and white, though. <laughs> Thank All you right, for thank your you. interpretation. And that's how I'm watching it as black and white people. I don't know what Chandra had in mind. Beautiful way she did it. All right, we'll, be, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show 20 after, right after this. Ask me anytime. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, in trending breakfast news, since we're on at breakfast time, a narcotic sniffer dog at the port of Cincinnati investigated what looked like to be a perfectly innocent shipment of frosted cereal, only to discover that the sugar coating was, in fact, a large amount of cocaine. Mm. Yes. Bico. On the cereal. Yes, on the cereal. Wow. Them drug that was clever, cartels. though. Yeah, yeah, that, that great. Was clever. <laughs> Bico, a narcotic detector dog with U.S. Customs and Border Protection, uncovered a haul of drugs and a shipment of breakfast cereal from South America that was headed to Hong Kong. Officers wow. found white powder and the flakes were coated in a grayish substance after the dog alerted uh, them on the shipment. The uh, value of the drug was estimated at, get this guys, $2.8 million, almost $3 million. What? Somebody in Hong Kong sure. is upset, partner. Mm. I don't know about in Hong Kong, but you can't let them kids get home. I'm glad they got it. You can't I have a question for y'all that I'd like to propose to y'all uh, before okay. we get out of here. I have a okay. what if question. Okay. Oh, I thought it was about mm. the cereal. No, <laughs> hell no. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm crazy, they, though. They got it, though. Yeah, they, they got it. Just good. All right. Well, uh, we'll get Steve's what if question when we come back uh, at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In honor of Black History Month, we've teamed up with our friends at Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head and Shoulders to help you discover your heritage. We've got your chance. Now, listen to this, everybody. This is important. We've got your chance to win $1,000 in cash. Did you hear what I said? $1,000 in cash, okay? That's a lot of money right now, okay? Anytime. Plus hair care gift baskets from both Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils by Head and Shoulders. But $1,000, people? Come on. <laughs> and we're also going to give you two African ancestry test kits for the winner and their spouse or friend. Enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. Discover your heritage today. Get all the info at steveharveyfm.com. Don't forget, $1,000. That is big, all right? (laughs) Anyway, so Carla and I took the African ancestry test. We kept Mm -hmm. it a secret from you guys. We didn't let anyone know. We're going to reveal our African ancestry results right now. Drum roll, please. All right, right, Carly, you you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. All right. So. Mm. I'm going to write where I thank you from. The results came back from AfricanAncestry.com. Yes. And Mm. I found out that my ancestors are from Ghana. Boom, oh, baby! Did good. I say yes. Ghana yesterday? <laughs> yes. That's good. Ah, that's deep. You did say yes. Ghana yesterday. I did say Ghana yesterday. Yes. Tommy, you did say Ghana yesterday. That's good. Yes. Ghana's a great mm-hmm. place, too, mm-hmm. man. I got good friends yes. over there. Oh, really, I know where Shirley's from. You all have no idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You all yeah. have oh, no idea. exactly where you from. I got okay. it. All right, I got you, Shirley. You ready? Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm from... Ass, go <laughs> I'm from the Central African Republic, all right? What? what? I've never even heard of it. I'm Me telling neither. you. Till Central today. African Republic, that's where I'm from. It's You're a, a Republican? <laughs> they speak French and Sango is their language. Uh, Cameroon is to the west, just to give you placement. And Sudan, North and South Sudan are uh, north and east of where I'm from. Central African Republic. All right. I said Congo. I thought, in Egypt. The Congo I thought you said Congo, sure. The Congo is south of there, Tommy. See, I, I, I had Congo. There. Right there where them diamonds at. That's where yeah, I had. So you're, but that's that's one of their natural resources. Diamonds, cotton, and bougie, coffee. Shirley, we knew it. <laughs> anyway, that's whatever. Why. I knew it. What I you had, Steve? Have. What did you uh, have? I had Northern Egypt. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I had Egypt. <laughs> 
If you want to discover your heritage today like Carla and I did, yes. enter to win $1,000 too, plus hair care gift baskets from both Gold Series from Pantene and Royal Oils from Head & Shoulders, and to African Ancestry test kits for the winner and their spouse or friend. Enter and get all the rules at steveharveyfm.com. Coming up, it is our last break of the day. And uh, a what if question from Steve Harvey at 49 minutes after the hour for all of us right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys, our last break of the day. And before we get out of here, Steve, you wanted to give us a what if question. You well, said I don't know if it's a what if, but w- what would you do for? Uh-huh. I think it's a better way to put it. Here's the question that I'm proposing to each one of you. Uh, I'm going to start with the ladies. Okay. Tommy Jr., don't say nothing. Yours going to be different. Ladies. Yes. For $30 million. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Did we... <laughs> We yeah. said that at the boat at, at the same what time. Ever, yes. <laughs> what else you Would need? Would you go to prison for five years? Oh, oh no. 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 Sorry. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Do over and <laughs> new. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Junior no. five years and though, Tommy. No. Huh? Junior no. and Tommy. Five years in prison. You get out fifty million. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going. No, no, no. Hold up. I, I'm talking. This ain't fed now. We going like fed. Pelican Bay or yes. San State? Quentin? Yes. No, State no. We going prison? out there or, or Angola. You can oh. pick either one. You can go to Angola, okay. Pelican Bay, or Quentin. Mm-hmm. Five years, fifty million dollars. I'm going down there. Tommy. I'm going down there and do my five. You way too small for that. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. I'm going down there and do this fight. I'm going to have everybody laughing at Angola. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, I'm you do a show. comedy show? Shows and everything. I, see, they have some issues down there. It, 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 it's going to be offensive to somebody. Junior? Oh, they five take years, it the way we 50 take million dollars. First of all, I'm, I'm going down there and my name is no longer Junior. It's J Rock. <laughs> What that's going to do? Five years, you guys. Oh, that, that's, that's, you hard oh, now? You looking at, yeah, dog. J Rock. I can't go in there, Junior. You know, you can't go in there with Junior. <laughs> you got to change lower my your name register now. register and your voice. You got to yeah, go down yeah. a couple of octaves. Hey, I'm not playing yeah. no games. Listen, I'm not playing. Uh-uh. All, all right now, try me. Uh-uh. Try me. Uh-uh. Ass going to get tossed up. Ain't nobody no. head, Five <laughs> years, 50 Smile. million. You'll go, Tommy. I'm going. Really? What? Wow. There's I really can't no do that. crazier way. than I thought. I can't, yeah, I can't go down no there and do that. Way. I'm playing, but I can't go down there and do that. I can't go do five. Would you, Steve? Million dollars. I can't do that. Hell no. I can't do it. I, mean, I, can, make, I can make $50 million free. Nah, <laughs> I would say this. Hello. That's, that's the thinking, Junior. Yeah, that's, that's what right I'm thinking. There. I just yeah. go down here and make it while I'm free. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now, $30 million, one year... <laughs> Three sixty-five. I'm doing I time my five it out with get the get pandemic. <laughs> we we was like, you know what made that hard? Um, so y'all remember that huh? show? Have you seen that show? Um, that show called no, Sixty Days. You. That Sixty nah, Days In it. show. Yeah, I've seen, seen it. That that right there. I can't do that. No, me neither, Junior. Mm-hmm. You're right. Nah. Nah, I ain't gonna make it. I'm not. Dog, I'm not going to I'm jail. Not going. I, five years. Oh <laughs> goodness. For fifty though? We talking about fifty? Hell no, boy, please. What if you die in I'm finna pay f- a few people while I'm in there. Ain't nobody finna do nothing to me. Tommy, five <laughs> years, stop it. That's five what you years. <laughs> I'm paying everybody. I'm playing I'm paying the black side. I'm paying the white side. Everybody You're not gonna have job, fifty bro. million then when you get out. You down about thirteen million. Yeah, he got that. Not even that. <laughs> Plus, they don't know you in there for the fit, man. Please, I mean, once no you start way. giving, you know they keep wanting. They don't. They don't stop. Dog. Once you keep giving them something, you can't give me nothing keep. to go to. You Dog. can't. Angola, uh-uh. San Quentin, uh-uh. and and Pelican Bay, five uh-uh. years. Uh-huh. All right, Steve, how'd you come up with that question? <laughs> I don't know. I just threw it out there. I just thought about it. That's okay. all. I can't go in there. Okay. But y'all was One in with billion, that thirty million. Steve. One billion. <laughs> One billion uh-huh. to do what? 
to go to prison. Okay, I'll say this for two and a half years. We'll 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 cut it in half. Two and a half years, a billion dollars. Uh, yes. Keep <laughs> <laughs> thinking on. about it. Yeah, I gotta think about that. Gonna a take me billion? How much? This bill. How much? One how much we talking about? Well, we know you go. Billion. You was gonna go. You go for million. five. Yeah. I, yeah. You so. stay out of this, Tommy. Yeah. You go. Steve go has a price. Yeah. So. Yeah. A Everybody billion a dollars, price. two years. But you know what though? I. Two and a half. Mm-hmm. Nah, I can't go. I can't go. I two and a half. How much? I can't go for two and a half years. I'm 64 years old. I can't get out of it. Be sixty seven. I get out. Get out. Of got a billion dollars. I'd rather just go and take my shot and try to make mine. Yeah. Like Junior, you can make. Plus, it. I like being free. It's the it's, it's the, the not freedom. being free. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's the Look, man. Hey man. I don't, I don't, hey man. Hey man. Do you know how they use a bathroom in prison? Yeah. You're you gonna me? get to walk in the yard. What's this? Not free. You get to walk outside in One the yard. Oh, Going out there. You, you know what's happening in the yard. You're making me mad right now. I'm not going, though. I can't. You I ain't watch Shawshank? You can go all out in the yard, pick up stones, uh, start saving you. rocks. Several times Morgan Freeman was in that movie. Yes, I have. Who don't Thank start you. with Morgan Freeman with her? <laughs> now, if, you if, Mor- said, if Morgan wanted you to go to jail now, for a year. Go with Morgan Freeman <laughs> to prison. Tommy, they was in a movie, Tommy and Shawshank, but they also said, cut. Right. <laughs> yeah, see, they wasn't in prison. For no one for for five million dollars, mm-hmm. all of you, yeah. yes. would you sleep mm-hmm. with a person that mm-hmm. you cannot stand? Oh, yeah. you can't yes. stand yeah. this person. Yes, yeah. you and yeah. s- would you sleep with them? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about all the way. All, yeah, all the way. Yes. Thirty days, you got to be with this person. You don't think you could do that, Tommy? No. I'm There's not some gonna people out there this. listening saying, I do that now. <laughs> I'm, that. I'm married to that person. Sleeping with his <laughs> ass now. That. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow, y'all. Y'all have a great God day. God willing. <laughs> <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 